Well, uh, I'm going to take a few minutes this afternoon to uh, sort of introduce you to some of the techniques that you'll need to put together your individual insect collection. What you'll have in front of you on your desk, you should all have a, a, a piece of paper, heavy paper with insect labels. These will be used by you and your partner for labeling the specimens uh, that, uh, that you have. I'm sure you will have all read the handout now, so what you'll know is that each one of you will be given a lot number, and again, this is associated with the label, and again, each of you will also have three uh, jars of insects, and you'll have a large jar which will have the medium-sized insects. You'll also have another uh, jar or uh, bottle that has some very, very small insects, uh, and again, we've sieved these samples to divide them into the coarse and the fine. And then you'll have another jar, which has some of the larger insects, which we've already pulled out of those vials. Um, and again, what you're going to need to do then is to sort through these collections to select specimens that you're going to use for your individual collection. I think the easiest place to start is with some of the larger insects. So again, uh, when you get started, take your vial with, or jar with the larger insects, uh, dump them out, and you and your partner can then look through them and, uh, and decide which ones you want to mount. When you've decided which ones you want to mount, uh, the first step is really just to put these labels away. And again, I should add, too, that you also have a, uh, a sheet of paper here with the actual ordinal names. We'll be using these later on when you actually get around to uh, organizing your collection, but for now we don't need to worry about these. What we're really trying to do is to prepare the specimens and after we get the specimens prepared and identified, then we can worry about um, organizing the collection. So again, what I've done here is just taken some of the insects from the coarse fraction, uh, the larger insects, and uh, sort of just laid them out on a piece of paper to dry a little bit. And again, we have some bees and some wasps here and some other things as well. So the first, uh, basically, if you're going to do this, what you're going to have to do is get intimate with your insect. You're going to have to pick it up. They're dead. They're preserved in alcohol. They're not going to bite, sting, or do anything untoward. Uh, again, the goal here is to put an insect pin through the middle part of the insect's body uh, in such a way that uh, it can be handled and, uh, and identified. Again, we. You worked with these insects uh, last week in lab, uh, so you understand the general concept of pinning. Again, what you'll have on each one of the desks is a fairly large assortment of insect pins. Again, the pins come in different sizes, different thicknesses. Some are much stouter than others, and some are much thinner than others. So what you want to do is to kind of use the stouter pins for the larger insects and the thinner pins for the smaller insects. And again, this is sort of a, a little bit by trial and error. Okay, so again, we have this fairly large wasp here, and how would we begin to uh, pin this? Well, again, uh, what you can do is simply hold on to it so you can get a good purchase, and then look at the middle part of the body. For the most part, the, the pins are going to go between the wings, where the wings attach to the body. And then just sort of look around in the insect pin box, or, or carefully, for a fairly stout insect pin because this is a fairly large insect. Okay, this one will be good enough. Okay, so what you do while holding the insect is simply to take the pin and to push it through the where the wing joins on the body. Again, can we bring this in a little bit closer? Is that good? And you can actually see and I'm actually sticking the pin through the body, trying to get it or oriented, and then pushing it through. Okay. And once it's pushed through, then we can actually look a little more carefully at the specimen to make sure it's nicely organized. If you look at this head on, you'll see it's actually crooked. I didn't get the pin through in uh, right through the middle of the body. So again, what you can do then is to pull the pin out part way and to reorgan reorient it so that the, sp the, p the specimen now is perpendicular to, or at least right angles with the pin, so it looks nice and straight up. Similarly, from the side, you can see that the specimen is nicely oriented. Again, some insects will have problems with droopy abdomens. You can see here the abdomen of this wasp is falling down. 
what you can do in this situation is to use a piece of paper or some extra insect pins to hold it up. And that's really all that's involved in directly pinning a fairly large insect. What we would do now then is to put it into the box, just to sort of set it aside. And um, the other important thing is about how high to put it on the insect pin, about a centimeter down from the top. There's no hard and fast rule, but it'd be nice if all your insects were about the same distance from the top, so there's enough room here to actually grab onto the specimen and move it around, but again, still room below the specimen for various labels. Again, we're going to be putting labels on in a few minutes, and if you have specimen too low, it won't look nice, for one, and again, you won't have, uh, you won't have a, a good place to put the labels. Okay, let's just do another one here while we're at it. And again, here's another insect specimen I put out. Again, I'm just blowing on it to get the wings to kind of move out a little bit and to be not stuck to the body quite so much. Again, just hold on to it here. Take an insect pin that's about a reasonable size for that specimen, and then to put it through the thorax between the base of the wings and to push it down further. Again, some of the other orders of insects have different places where they're pinned, and all of these are shown in your textbook in, uh, in the section on mounting and labeling insects. So again, this bee-like insect here, uh, I've again pinned and put it at about the same level as before. And that's really all there is to these larger insects. Now, the uh, important thing, and again, is to very quickly get labels on the specimens. Each one of these labels are unique. That is, each one of these collections uh, has a unique label. You'll notice that this uh, collection here is 2009-010. And again, what we have here are a series of labels for each of the numbers. So uh, if this was your sample, you would have the label that goes with that. And again, what you need to do is to cut these labels out carefully, neatly, with, with some scissors. Again, that's what I've done here. And here is the label that uh, will go with these particular specimens here. So this is the 2010, uh, this is the 2009-010 label that goes with these specimens. Okay, so the thing to do then is to put the label on the table okay, and to set it out here, a number of the labels. Again, I've cut out some in advance. And then what you can do then is just to take your specimen that you've prepared and to then pin it in the center of the label so that the specimen is nicely oriented over the uh, label. Again, if you just touch it with the insect pin lightly, it will then pick up the, the label. And the next thing is to use one of these little blocks that are on the, ins on the table, and these are pinning blocks. And again, this is a good way to attach the labels at a, at a standardized height. Then what you can do then is just to go over to the pinning block, push the insect through, and then move it up to uh, uh, as high a position as you can get it. Again, uh, with these very large insects, they tend to occlude part of the specimen. But again, uh, we can use this lower block on the pinning block to set the label at a standardized height. And again, the ins let me just show you this specimen here. So again, here we have the specimen uh, nicely oriented over the label. We can read the label. And again, the label can be read from uh, the insect's head is off to the left, this side here off to the left, then again you can read the actual information on the label. And you can see here the lot number on this is um, 2009-010. Okay, so that's, that's really all there is to it for these larger insects. And again, then once it's been, uh, you know, once it's been pinned and prepared in this manner, then you can just put them back in the insect box that you have and start to amass your specimens that way. Okay, while we're at it, let's take this other one and just quickly slap a label on it as well. Again, one of the first things you want to do is to label specimens so you don't mix them up. If you end up mixing up the specimens with their labels, they become scientifically worthless and you might as well just sort of throw them away. And again, as I mentioned, we do want these specimens to form part of the the reference collection at Jokers Hill, so we want to have 
good labels on these. Okay, so that's the direct pinning of the of the uh, of the larger insects. And again, all of these should have a, 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 a bottle with a number of these to practice on. And I would suggest that this is the sort of the first place to start with the larger insects. Okay, we'll take a short break here, and then we will start off with the uh, dealing with the smaller insects.